Hello, good morning, everybody. Happy New Year's. How's everybody doing? Let me just uh, make sure I'm going live. All right, give me a thumbs up if we're looking good. All right, I think we're looking good. Let me know if you can hear me. Okay, just do a quick audio check. Just give me a thumbs up if we're good. All right, thank you, Sonia, for that thumbs up. Uh, let me just do a, up. Uh, oh, looks like we're good. All right, let's see, we have a quick question right here. Good morning, I'll try to figure out how to watch this on YouTube, on the TV versus my phone. I'm from the snowy upper peninsula of Michigan. Yeah, we're about to get that heavy snow, us here. I'm close to Chicago, so we're about to get hit in about two hours from now. All right, uh, TV, you should be able just to uh, have it on the YouTube app. Uh, you should be ready to go with that. All right, let's see. Let me just do a quick camera check. I have two cameras hooked up. So I have this one here. I have my, oh, I have my third one here, my GoPro. And let's see. And I have my computer, all right? So I have two computers, two cameras, all right? So we're gonna get into some of these details on embroidery. Uh, so just quick, uh, let's do a quick introduction right now while we're getting people in today, all right? So first thing first, welcome to 2022, all right? So we all made it, right? Uh, we are now literally just hours into the brand new year. All right, so which better way, what better way than to actually hang out with all the, with all of our fellow embroiderers, okay? And learn some very good information today, all right? Uh, it's gonna be hard for me to be uh, going back and forth with the chat. So I'm definitely gonna go back and uh, check some of uh, the shout outs, all right, actually. Let's start with this here. All right, welcome to week one. Let me know what city and state you're from. All right, I think uh, we're, uh, we should be getting some guests from, or some uh, viewers, not only from the US, but all around the world. So make sure you do a shout out here. And if you have a question, just put a Q uh, in the beginning of your question. And I might not be able to get to all the questions today, okay, because we have a jam-packed informational day today. So if I don't get to your question, I'm definitely going to go back to the chat and uh, document any, um, any questions that I don't get to. And that way, starting on week two, we'll start off with questions on week two. All right, so let's see. Uh, so as you can see, I'm going to have, I'm going to be kind of all over the place. I have the actual chat and the actual, uh, program running on this computer. I have my digitizing on this computer and then I just have the regular feed on my uh, iPad here. All right. So if you see me all over the place, it's just kind of, I'm, I'm kind of doing uh, three things at the same time. All right. So today, welcome to week one of the Romero Thread Saturday Morning Embroidery School. This class is designed to not only uh, present information, but we're gonna analyze and we're gonna go into the real details of embroidery, all right? That way we can be experts, all right? That's the main thing of being not just expert of embroidery, but being experts of the fundamentals of embroidery. So of course, we're not gonna become experts today on week one, okay? But my goal is to provide every Saturday morning for the next 52 weeks, okay? So I'm gonna go very, very hard these next 52 weeks, every Saturday of this year. All right, so uh, we're gonna always start off very slow and very um, at, a, at a slow pace, okay? But slowly and every week, we're gonna add something new and more information on top of everything, okay? So even if you don't, uh, if, you, if you miss out on a specific week or something, okay? You, uh, the videos are going to be provided live or the, the videos are going to be provided on the replay. Okay. So you can always come back and uh, 
look at the videos over and over and over and over. All right, let's say we got a lot of happy New Year's, right? Everybody excited to start the New Year's. And I'm just saying, like, what better way to start with a quick morning class, right? We're already 10 steps of, ahead of everybody. All right, if we're here today and we're going to we're gonna get some good training here. So it looks like we are different locations. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's start today's training. Okay, let me see if I pull it up here. All right, so today's today's training. I'm gonna make it quick, uh, quick and simple. Well, I'm gonna try to make it quick and simple. Okay, um, let's take off this banner here. So three ways to digitize to digitize text logo. Okay, so let's talk about text logo real quick. Um, and I have a sample here. All right, let's talk about this one here, the Amazon logo. Right. Uh, a lot of a lot. It looks very basic, right? It looks very basic. This logo. It looks like you know, it's just it's something that we see every day, right? But anytime you're digitizing logo. OK, anytime you're digitizing a company logo. All right. Just know that you're making money. All right. That's really where the money's at is digitizing logos. All right. That's why I think uh, to start off the New Year's. Right. Everybody has their New Year's resolution. And I know everybody's at least on their top three is to actually uh, get clients and make money. Right. So if you're if you have uh, clients that have uh, logos, right? If you find yourself in a situation where you're doing logos, 99% of the time you're making money. All right. So of course, very, uh, important to know that. All right. So what we're going to do today, we're going to go, we're going to, uh, we're going to talk about three ways to digitize a logo. Okay. And I have the Amazon logo as an example for today. Okay. Just for training purposes only. Uh, this is definitely not my customer or my client. This is just the best example that I could come up with. All right. For three reasons. Uh, reason number one, we're we're all familiar with Amazon. All right. We're probably going to be uh, using Amazon at least for the next 20 years. All right. So we all have used it. We all familiar with it. OK. Second reason. Second reason why I chose the Amazon logo for today's training is because it is a sans serif. All right, start getting familiar with the word sans serif. All right, what sans serif is, is just a block type font. Okay, so when I talk about block font, I'm talking about just look at the ends. So if you see the ends of the letter A, you see how it's flat, there's nothing attached to the ends. All right, same thing with the M and all the other letters. All right, so when I'm talking about sans serif, I'm talking about a block font. And really, if you get a customer, with a sans serif type font, just do a little quick prayer because your digitizing and your embroidery is going to be a little bit easier than the more advanced type text. All right. So for week one, I want to make it as basic as possible. All right. And then the third reason why I chose this font is because this is actually a custom font. All right. So this was designed by a very famous uh, designer. So you'll see. Uh, once you have variation in your text, then it kind of, uh, you, you have to kind of digitize a little different, all right? Uh, so we'll talk about that when we're going over the three different ways, all right? So when we're talking about three ways to digitize a logo, all right? The way I like to break it down, I like to break it down as number one. The first way is this is just matching the font. All right. So in, in groups, you're always going to you're always going to see people saying, hey, what font is this? Right. They have a picture of something and they want to match a the font. They're like, hey, what what font is this design in? OK. Um, second way. Second way is actually just digitizing the font real quick. Or if you know, if you know the if 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 you can digitize it quick, it can be quick. All right. So sometimes it's quicker to digitize something than to look for the font. All right. And then the third way we're going to digitize it is. It's kind of like the way that I like to do it and I'll kind of show you how we do it. All right. 
so I like to break it down as three ways to digitize it. You have the, the easy way, the easy way, which is finding the font. It's the faster way, just digitizing it, especially if you're, uh, if you have experience and you have uh, the practice. And then the third way is the better way, the way that I like to do it. All right, which we'll talk about it now. All right, so let's look at this logo. So when we look at the Amazon logo or any logo in particular, right? It doesn't necessarily have to just be the Amazon logo. When we see this logo, this is what the general public sees, okay? The general public, they see two colors. They see a very clean logo overall, all right? But us as embroiderers, okay? Us as in embroiderers, we gotta start thinking as embroiderers and as digitizers. So we kind of got to see through this logo, all right? It's like if we have x-ray vision and we have to start looking what's behind this logo, all right? So when we're digitizing today, okay, this is what we see. As digitizers, this is what we are going to see, all right? And this goes with any type of logos or designs, all right? And once you start breaking down your designs like this into pieces, now you know, now you kind of get an idea of what's possible or what's not possible. Because sometimes a customer is going to give you the most outrageous design. Okay. And if you're, if you're looking at that design with your embroiderer point of view, okay, you're going to know what's possible, what's not possible. Because the worst thing you want to do is say yes to a job and in reality, it's not possible. Okay, now you got to play the back and forth game. So if you can, if you can stop it beforehand, and let somebody know, hey, you know, you have this type of design, but we're gonna have to make some adjustments here. Okay, because you could kind of already anticipate the the issues that you're gonna have. All right, so let's look at let's look at how I broke down the Amazon logo here. Let's look at the letter A. Okay, so if we're looking at the letter A. Notice it has two objects, all right? So there's two pieces to this A, all right? We have the green part, which is coming one way, and then we have the other part of the leg of the, of the A coming there, all right? So that's how we want to start thinking when we're thinking of text and fonts, all right? Same thing with the letter M. Now with the letter M, we have three parts to that M, okay? And notice that the blue... Okay, the blue is kind of overlapping the white portion, all right? And we're going to talk about why you have to overlap, right? It's kind of obvious. If you don't overlap, you might start, uh, you're going to get gaps, all right? So this is how we're thinking. So customers thinking this, customers like, hey, I want this embroidered. And when you look at that design, this is what you're, this is what you're seeing, all right? So, um, Let's see. All right. So this is another thing. This is in the in the software here. All right. Same thing. This is what kind of the customer seeing. This is uh, st simulating the final product right now. Okay. But us as embroiders, this is what we see. We see the bones. This is the bones. When you're digitizing, you're digitizing the bones. And then after you digitize the bones, now you start adding all the details, the underlay. Okay, the density, the pool compensation. All right, so that's kind of how it breaks down. Okay, and then I like to use this as a cheat sheet. What I do, I uh, and I'm gonna have this. I'm actually gonna have this uh, page here uh, available to download uh, later today. All right, but what I do, I lay out all the alphabets of a particular font. I lay out all the alphabets, and I print it out. Okay, so I have myself a cheat sheet, all right? So anytime I have to digitize something and I wanna know, hey, how does how would the software do it, okay? So the, the software, all the text, they were digitized by a professional, okay? They, they, it's pretty much years and years and years of tweaking the fonts, okay? So a lot of times the software, they're, they're gonna know what they're doing, okay? So what I do, I have a sample here. Let's see if you could, this is uh, like a, Block my face. All right. So I print this out and I have a page like this for almost every font. 
Okay, so for almost every font, I have a cheat sheet like this that kind of guides me just in case. Okay, just in case if because there's so many, there's a million ways to digitize a letter. All right. So sometimes if I'm if I'm kind of like on the border between a, a specific style, I'll look at this guide and it'll kind of tell me, hey, what well, what does the software recommend? OK, and you could do all this with uh, any software. OK, so. This is with the stitches and then this is all on the options when you're when you're on the options ready to print your stuff. OK, you're just taking off the stitches. All right. So today. Let me kind of switch out here. So today, what I want to go over, let's add. All right, so we are in the software now. All right, so what I want to do, actually, let me go back to the camera. All right, so today, what I want to do, I want to go ahead and digitize the Amazon logo three ways all right so like i said let's go ahead let's do it the first way which is uh, okay which is just looking for the font okay looking for the font uh usually the thing with looking for the font what happens is it can be time consuming OK, it's time consuming going one by one by one by one. All right. So what happens is. In actuality. This Amazon. Let me put the, hold on, I'm trying to put the picture in picture real quick. Oh, hold on. Give me a sec. All right. I'm trying to switch it over to. I'm trying to switch it over to the laptop. But it ain't like that. Hold on. Give me one second as I work with. It doesn't want to connect to to the laptop. All right. Let me see what happened here. Remove. Let me just unplug it and then plug it back up. Give me one second. All I'm doing is I'm trying to hook up the the laptop. Hold on, let me shut it down. Give me one second. I'm just resetting the laptop real quick. Let's see if that works there. All right. Uh, let me see. I could probably take some questions real quick. Uh, we have some comments from here. All right. We got a lot of happy New Year's. I'm learning on. Let's see this one. I'm learning on the PE 10 and I hope to be able. Yep. All right. I'm, I'm trying to do it as uh, as software friendly and machine friendly. So any anything that we learn here, it could get uh, translated into any type of software and program. All right. Let's see if that worked. All right. Doesn't look like it works. All 
All right, give me two minutes. Let me, I don't know why it's not allowing me to. All right, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn off the, the switcher. I'll keep this page up here. All right, no matter what, it's not gonna disconnect, so. Um, Give me one second. Let me just restart this. So we lost the feed, but I'm just going to reset it. Give me one second and let it reset. Sometimes I think if uh, if I'm pushing too many buttons, doesn't like that because what I have I have a switcher and I'm sending all my video feed into a switcher so maybe it just has to reset real quick All right, give me one second. I'm just trying to set it up. All right, right now I'm just having some video issues, but I'm trying to fix this real quick. So give me one second to try to get this situated. I was trying to bring up the, the laptop because I have a, uh, a separate laptop that feeds into the, to here. Hold on, I'm gonna go from here. Um, the software that I use, I use a uh, Wilcom uh, Embroidery Studio Designing 4.5. Uh, I started with, uh, with Hatch, with Hatch 2, so it's very similar. All right, let me see. I might just have to uh, come back. Oh, I see. Come here. All right, let's see. Yeah, it's still frozen. All right, what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to I'm just going to shut down. I'm going to shut down. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to shut this down real quick. I'm going to restart it and then like in 5 minutes, okay? 5 minutes, I'm going to jump back up and I'm going to get I'm going to go live again. All right, so don't go anywhere. Just kind of take a little uh, drink break, uh, bathroom break, and then we'll come back right now in five minutes. All right, because I'm actually getting into the main part of it. All right, when the when the laptop didn't want to switch over. All right, give me five minutes. All right, I'll see you guys in five minutes right now. <laughs> 